Hey team, uh, this video here is just for my equipment team across the country for rolling out of the new measurable response kits. The idea here is just to put the whole lot into a single picture. We've got all the online learning available um, for your stations. You can use this video as you see fit. So the emergency medical response pack, this is it here. The new kit, a bag with blankets and towels, drinking water and your AED, that's the whole package. Just a pointer on the AEDs, this is the monitoring AED and it has the pouch on the um, strap. It's the only way you can tell the difference. Um, we'll have to sort this out, but the Life Pack uh, 1000 monitoring looks absolutely identical to the standard Life Pack 1000. And it's really important they don't get mixed up. Yeah, this sack here, inside that I've got two ambulance blankets and two towels, so you can see it fits quite comfortable and snugly. The other thing that is part of the kit is carrying clean, fresh drinking water. Previously, appliances may have carried bags of saline. From the ambulance, that is no longer necessary or appropriate. As long as you've got clean water, it can undertake all the first aid functions that we've got. So you've got four uh, nebules of saline if you're doing minor um, washing of wounds or moistening dressings. But anything larger, you want to call off a burn after our standard treatments you can use this water. Rightio, so the point is about the kit. Um, so we have spent a lot of time developing and investing in this. It's not a cheap product. Uh, it's made by an Australian company who make um, professional ambulance bags for all sorts of ambulance services. And the kit's been developed with input from um, ambulance, urban and rural firefighters and first and co-responders as well. The material uh, is impervious to water, so you're not going to have the issues out of the previous packs where you get a wet job and water gets into the pack. The material in the black here is very, very hard wearing and should uh, save any damage being dragged around. Uh, we've also covered on this end, the zip is also covered here with a flap to make sure if the kit has to be stored on end, which needs to occur in some appliances because of the size. So if you compared this kit with the current kit that is on the workwear site. It's about 50 millimeters longer. It's roughly the same size in this part and this is the new wider features. All the materials that are webbing are actually plastic coated. So if you have any blood or body fluids or mud, it can be cleaned off and doesn't soak into the material. Right, so as far as handling goes, you've got a shoulder strap as choice one uh, and it's got a non slip so when it's carried around it won't slide off your shoulder. It has a handle on the side, handle on the top. Uh, also in the back here you'll see there's a, a metal ring that actually is a helicopter rated lifting um, clip so you can lower the pack down to a hole or hook it onto something without any fear of any failure. And also on the back of it um, there is a full backpack strap uh, just a reminder, when you set up the pack, make sure that is not clipped inside here. It's too hard to undo, so when they come new, they need to be disconnected. Same idea, shoulder straps with a waist harness as well, and it's also got the um, protective webbing so it doesn't get uh, covered in any liquids. The kit is in kind of three components. The resuscitation and oxygen therapy is the bottom section. Inside here is the trauma pack, and on here is um, the additional items and the uh, safety and hygiene equipment. So we'll just start working our way through the kit. The idea here is uh, it's a pull out first aid slash trauma pouch. And the idea is even with the kit stowed, you can just pull this kit out anytime you want. If the kit is stowed in the truck vertically, it can still be pulled out. So that is a little beastie here. Uh, the idea was to develop a kit where you didn't have to wrap through and find bits and pieces so everything in the here should be easy to find. Uh, when you unfold it the contents is actually listed and you can read exactly what goes where. There is one uh, slight anomaly we've got there is only one cat tourniquet carried in the trauma pouch and the prime reason for that is it is too tight to fit two in there so for quick access the second cat tourniquet is placed in the lid of this compartment. Tucked away in here, we've also uh, got a ring cutter as well. I don't think we know to go through specific through any of the features in here. 
if you want to uh, get more details on the the cat tourniquet, it's all online in the learning package and a video. In the um, hygiene and safety, in the top here we've got a uh, patient report form if you need to pass the details on the ambulance. The check sheet tucks in the back here quite nicely. And as I said, the other cat tourniquet is here. And we've got the, um, the guide for co-responders, not the first responders. That's a vomit carton. And the other thing that has been quite useful is we've got a small package of uh, universal um, bio wipes and that's for cleaning anything that gets dirty on the job so we can go back into commission. So in the main body of the pack is the resuscitation material. Now the pack has been changed around so that when it's placed at a patient's head everything can be easily reached. The old packs used to fold long ways and you couldn't actually reach all the equipment from working around the patient. So that's why it's zipped in this fashion. So everything the same here is clearly labelled. Uh, red writing is adult, blue writing is child. Um, there is, uh, on the oxygen cylinder, there's a duplicate set of um, oxygen uh, masking and a nasal prongs for adults, which is the most common use. The concept here is everything to do with a resuscitation is available straight on the opening of the bag. So you don't have to go anywhere else. You've got your gloves here, you've got protective glasses for the person working near the airway, and it's all ready to go for the patient and for you to deliver the resuscitation. Other useful points are there's no Velcro. Everything here is magnetic, and the idea with that is to make sure that if there's any contamination, uh, it's easily cleaned up, but also you don't get anything stuck inside the um, hook and loop of Velcro. Colour coding for the airways. So you can pull it out without having to uh, work out what size um, tip it's got. One of the, the clips on the pack on the back strap and the shoulder strap in here are actually a fancy little magnetic one. You just pull that and it will release. And you put it back together, you just sit them together and it locks up really quite good. With the oxygen still in the pack, um, it is slightly heavier than the previous kits, but not by much. Uh, the reason why, why there's a little bit of extra weight the inhalo oxygen cylinder, um, which is exactly the same cylinder as the previous one, because it's got a built-in regulator, it's about 50 millimetres longer, and it's held at a higher pressure, so there's roughly 25% more oxygen in it. When they arrive, they've got this plastic cover on it, which obviously you just break off and remove. Uh, when you can get it from BOC, it should have this already on it. It has a pressure gauge, so when you place this in the kit, it should be pressure gauge up, and the masks and the prongs to the back, so it gives you room to turn on the valve. So simple stuff here, which is all covered on the training package. Your on and off is on the end here, and you dial up the oxygen flow on the top, and the flow rate is in line with the barb. Uh, it goes up to 15 litres a minute, and then you just turn on the cylinder via the valve at the side. The white fitting here and here, we don't use at all. One's a refilling port and the other one's for hospital use. Something that might be new to some is uh, previously we just had bag masks and non-rebreather oxygen masks. So the non-rebreather is now called a reservoir mask. There's two more oxygen administration um, devices, which is a simple mask and a nasal prongs. And of course the other thing that's come in the kit is the pulse oximeter. So basically what we're saying uh, from this ambulance's point of view. Oxygen is a medication and we need to uh, deliver it professionally and previous practices by um, the way we've been set up is inappropriate. We're running too high flow oxygen. So what we're trying to achieve now is provide oxygen levels um, that maintain a saturation above 94% and obviously there's a number of other criteria we you just use it anyway. So in a lot of cases if the patient isn't critical uh, using nasal prongs or a simple face mask is more than appropriate. The oxygen masks that we've been purchasing now have the hose attached to them and just so you can pick out quite quickly is inside the paediatric uh, masks the writing is in a blue label so it's easy to pick out as well.
I guess the only other major thing to know is about reuse of equipment. So um, we've determined with ambulance advice that the bag masks can actually be uh, used multiple times. As long as they're not heavily soiled, it's fine to reuse them. What should sit between the bag mask and the face, uh, the face mask is one of these filters. Every time you use the resuscitator, this needs to be thrown away and replaced. But the remainder can actually just be wiped down using those um, biological wipes in the top package. Wipe this down and that down prior or after use. And if you've got any concerns about hygiene or contamination, dispose of it. But thinking in a, a green way, if this stuff is fine for multiple uses, uh, we should do that. The, the thing to check, and the, I guess the part of the um, bag mask which is the most risk of failure is getting holes in the reservoir for oxygen at the end.